Hello again everyone and welcome to a new update for an unbound clockwork. So we really made a huge progress in August this time and uh, as it's mostly in post-production and animation I'm only comfortable to show you the tip of the iceberg to not spoil too much. But anyways I'm really happy with the results we were able to achieve this month. So this time Inca was able to spend their entire month between semesters working on the post-production of the main office scene only. So uh, there was a huge progress of course. Um, the entire scene is way over 40 shots and over 4 minutes of animation and the visual post-production of it is now nearly done. Like there's only one shot missing actually. So that's really great and to see how everything looks finally, um, yeah, that's a, that's a great milestone even though there's one shot missing. But yeah, there actually were some quite challenging shots like involving camera movements and blue screens and a lot of compositing and then doing the color matching between the scenes. Um, it's really difficult and Inca became a real After Effects expert in the meantime, which is really great and helpful. And as with all my scenes, we really want to only use compositing, like only use After Effects to bring different footages together. So in this scene, for example, the blue screen is replaced by an actual image of my old city model, which again had a blue screen, which got replaced by some images of storm clouds. So um, that's already a lot. And then the human is coughing here. And so in the middle ground, we had to insert some kind of smoke. And here we used some vapor from a steam iron to make this smoking cuffing effect. So in the final scene all the footages you are seeing are some real recordings of something and um, yeah I think the final look is exactly how I wanted it to be and the process of getting there is really challenging and interesting and I'm quite glad to have someone who's capable to do this. At the same time Mona was still continuing on the animation of the boss office scene and she also made a huge progress, like 50 to 60 seconds of new animations and the most part of that scene is now also done. What's left to do is close-up animations of hands and facial expressions um, and we are very confident we will be able to complete that in September. So that's really nice. And also looking at my big spreadsheet of all the animations, I can now say confidently that we just crossed the 80% mark, which is a really nice milestone to cross off as well. Yeah, it was a really busy month and I'm quite sorry I don't have more footage to show for now, but as it's all actual movie scenes, it would be major spoilers. So <laughs> sorry for that, um, just take my word for it, we were able to complete a lot of things this time. So let's have a look at the side projects then. Um, so first I was able to spend some more time programming the thread cutting machine back there and it's now able to perform its basic functions. So let's have a look. Okay, right now the machine got a serial interface so I'm able to control it via the computer. But the commands are very minimal, only using the bare minimum of characters because later there will be a nice control box next to it where you can dial in all the parameters and then just hit go. So what I'm typing and receiving here is not really uh, what you would do to operate the machine. It's more like a debug interface. <laughs> I can see what's, what's happening there. So first uh, connecting to the machine. Nice noise. Among the things I can do with it now are for example um, number 13. A light bulb turns on. Ho ho. Yeah, that will be a working light which will be incorporated in the main body of the machine. And of course I can also turn it off again. So that was kind of the first test for my interface, but now the more interesting stuff. First, traveling. Uh, command number 17. Let's use speed 5. And it starts moving up. And when I want to stop, um, and most interestingly, cutting threads, of course. So that command is a bit more complicated. Uh, number 15, the first parameter will be the depth. So let's say uh, I want to cut 2 centimeters deep, which is quite a lot, but I want, to, want you to see something. 
Uh, next parameter is feed rate, which is kind of the ratio between travel and rotation. So let's use 400. Um, that's like um, 4 millimeter pitch. Uh, that's quite a lot, but then again, I want you to see something. And let's cut it quite fast. Let's say 600 RPM. And start. Very well. Um, let's do something faster. Maybe um, number 15, same depth. Um, only one millimeter feed rate and as fast as possible. Well, isn't that nice? Okay, uh, just a quick demo for now. I don't want to get into all the nitty-gritty details of it uh, yet, but I think you can imagine the grin on my face once it did the first successful movements and anything, and yeah, using the magic of computer science to turn physical things is just really great, and magic it is indeed. Um, and as an added bonus, I already tried uh, using that uh, machine to cut the first frets uh, in plywood for this month's miniature for my um, patron supporters. So that was also a really nice premiere and um, yeah, let's start slowly with wood, but I'm quite confident it will be able to do its task also in steel and brass and anything. We will see. Uh, well, to be honest, there are still some bugs I need to figure out, of course. Um, the most critical of it, um, sometimes um, the counter which counts the depth of the cut and then triggers an interrupt to reverse the direction, doesn't trigger. And strangely, this mostly happens when the spindle speed is very slow. And I think it's really strange. I would have expected an interrupt uh, not working when things are too fast, maybe, but in this case it's too slow. I don't know. Uh, I think I need to spend some more uh, sleepless nights staring at the code, but um, if you have a hunch what this might be, uh, write it in the comment section. Um, anyways, um, I also completed the commission of two armatures for that other short film production I'm currently involved in, and there will be a video of them shortly where I will discuss uh, a very nice rigging mechanism which I used for them. So that's also something to look forward to in the upcoming weeks. So I think that's it for today. Um, I hope I will have more things to show again next month. We will see. But um, for now, thank you all so much for watching this video and for supporting my work, of course. And yeah, see you next time. Bye bye. strangely loud.